What's good everybody, Day Walker Reporter here to talk to make a video about the new season of Blade of the Immortal and kind of, this is kind of like a review slash rant, but it's not necessarily 100% just a rant on part of Blade of the Immortal, it's also a rant on part of someone who did a review, a pretty good friend of mine named Satsuki the Savage, I'm a huge fan of his channel, love his channel, makes some good content, makes the, his Fruits Basket videos and Attack on Titan videos and Hunter Hunter videos are top notch. If you want somebody who has that sort of content, definitely check out Sasuke's channel. And I did that to preface that I don't hate his channel, I love his channel, but I'm but I have critiques of his sort of review of the most recent episodes of Blade of the Immortal. Now, to start to start this off, his major criticisms of the series were the fact that the editing was jarring in episode 3. It wasn't clear, the character motivations weren't clear, and I'm going to keep that because that's not 100% true. And um, those were the two major critiques I remember. Yeah, and that the fact that they cut out some important content that, like, about Manji's immortality that could play a major role later. Now, I saw the first three episodes. I did a live stream on Twitch talking about them. I was a little bit hype about it because I'm a huge Blade of the Immortal fan and I was surprised that it didn't look like Berserk 2016 and 2017. It was done by Leiden Films because at first I was terrified, you know, of course. But, you know, the fact that it visually looks at least somewhat decent and the fact that it was directed by the guy who did Technolize and Steins Gate, which is a very important detail, mind you, played a role in my investment in the series. Now, going from there, what is the issue with Satsuki's video? First and foremost, I feel like it misinforms the audience. Um, it has, it probably shows that he probably wasn't 100% paying attention. Because the mo character motivations, especially of Rin and of Magatsu Taito and of freaking Sasuke Abayame and freaking um, Maki were pretty clear in the first three episodes, especially Rin's character and what she was trying to do. Now, Manji's character, it's more so if you pay attention to the details that you get a clear idea, idea of what his motivation and why he's trying to help Rin, right? And it's all how much you pay attention to the dialogue, right? The thing is about it is that I realize about a lot of anime fans nowadays is that we have a tendency to expect a series to scream at us what a character's motivation is, and if it isn't screaming at us what their motivation is, then we're, we're, we're viable to be like, oh, well, this character has no motivation, why are they doing this? But if you pay attention to dialogue, and this comes from reading a lot of books, if you pay attention to dialogue, you'll realize, hmm, well, this character has a very clear reason as to why they are supporting Rin, and this is completely divorced from reading the manga. For example, if you're dealing with the conversation between Manji and Rin over, uh, against the water. In the conversation between Manji and Rin, there was this very clear sort of establishment of like Manji's sort of confusion about the morality of Rin and whether or not Rin is justified in doing this. And he questions Rin very, very starkly asking her about like, like, why does she want to why does she want to go against the Ito Ryu? And then Rin talks about how they talk how they did all these sort of terrible things to to her family to her mother. And then like based off of that dialogue, I don't know how you can make the you can make the assumption or make the statement that character motivations aren't that clear. I mean, Monty's character motivation, if you really pay attention to the very first episode, you look at the very first scene of the very first episode, we see a scene of a girl running. That girl who's running is established a little bit later to be his sister, and it's established because there's this guy who kills her, and the guy who kills her ends up stabbing her and Manji together, and, and you know, it's, it's you, you know, okay, that was his sister, and this guy killed his sister. I don't know why, and the reason why we don't know why is because they don't go out of their way to do the explanation and the exposition, um, but this is kind of like where I would say go read the manga, and I feel like sometimes the people, a lot of people think that an anime is supposed to be a one-to-one -one adaptation when a majority of the time it isn't. If you look at Berserk 1997, it's mostly a trailer for the manga. Like, there are entire moments that they cut out, and I think it's specific that they cut those moments out so it 
incentivizes the reading of the manga. And one, one of the clearest examples of this and why I feel like this is, this is the case is because the manga of Blade of the Immortal is continuing right now with this new arc. And it's, I mean, to, to be specific, it isn't written by the same person, but, you know, which is reason to be kind of concerned, but, you know, there's a reason why they're kind of incentivizing people to read Hiroki Samura's manga, because his manga kind of stand out and they're in, like, a realm of their own. Now, um, Rin's character motivation is very clear. We see a scene of Rin's family get killed, we see of her dad get killed by Kuroi Sabato. And Kuroi Sabato is basically a center point of hatred for her for a majority of the first half, uh, for, the, for the first half of the first episode. And it's very clear because you see, a, you, see a scene of, you see a scene of Kuroi Sabato killing her dad. And then later on we see a scene of her going to try to kill him. And then we see her mother's head on his, sho on his shoulder. And it's pretty messed up. And what does this help help you to establish? Okay, Rin hates this group of people because they killed their father. And they and and in a choice of dialogue, if you pay attention, they raped her mother. And they didn't have to show that. It was through dialogue. It was explained. They raped her mother and they kill and they killed her father. They showed us killing her father. And okay, so now it's clear motivation. She wants revenge because she comes from what? A samurai family. And what does Samurai believe in? Honor. And what, do, what is it about honor? Her being innocent and thinking like probably a base level of honor. You can kind of, these are things that you can surmise by analyzing. Her whole thing is, okay, they killed and raped. Like her, they, she doesn't understand the full depth of the, of the situation. But because her baseline is that she's, she's, is this character who's kind of like, innocent she is this character that doesn't desire to kill people it's more of a motivation for manji to try to help her because manji being this person who's used to being in rough situations with people on all sides trying to kill him being the being the person who who's the murderer of a hundred and this is kind of something where you have to read the manga the people the specific people he killed in order to get him kind of being sort of looked down upon by everybody there's a very clear idea as to why that's the case why why he's immortal in the manga the major points that i agree with sasuke is the fact that they did cut out a very important chapter between episode two and episode three that really goes in depth with manji's immortality and establishes how he became well not necessarily how he became immortal i feel that's a i feel like well yeah they do because they, Yabi Kutani is a character that's kind of, is like a precursor, and you can kind of surmise the fact that there's a relation between her and Manji. But, um, in the first few chapters, they established that she's the reason why he became immortal. And in that missing, and in the missing chapter that they didn't adapt, they really go in depth with the mechanics behind the immortality, behind the blood worms and how they work, um, what can injure somebody what can harm someone who is immortal and this is very important because it establishes the limitations of the immortality of manji and i'm going into all this to sort of establish this last point involving sasuke's video and involving the blade of the immortal anime so far you're going to have to read the manga in conjunction when watching the anime because the director of this series is a really good director but he's dealing with a very limited amount of episodes. He only has 24 episodes to adapt over 300 chapters of manga. And there's no guarantee that it's going to get a second season. And the reason why we know for sure there's no guarantee is because it's an OVA done by Leiden Films. And it really depends on how successful this is. Um, Blade of the Immortal is a multimedia like sometimes you have some manga are multimedia or some series are supposed to be multimedia you're gonna have to read another source and you're gonna have to sort of be okay with that i mean you can expect better i was expecting better myself because the chapter that they cut out is one of my favorite chapters in the whole series because it really helps you to understand manji character manji's character and stuff like that and then the first 
they they cut out a really important scene that I feel like the older anime did really well with um Manji, the very first scene that really helps, the, that really drills in home, okay, this guy's immortal, this guy's dope, you know, is a scene where he's in the prison and he kills the prison guard. That scene is a really big scene, like, it's, 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 it's one of the best first scenes in a manga that they kind of cut out, that I was kind of upset that they cut it out. So yeah, um, as far as it, as far as the animation, the animation isn't blow my mind incredible, I feel like one smart thing that they kind of do to keep the action engaging slightly is to is to make the editing a little bit faster to distract from the fact that there isn't a whole lot of animation going on. Um, I hope they kind of fix that in the later episodes because Blade of the Immortal, this series is a series that's sold on its fight. So that's some of the best fights in manga. I would say the best fights in manga. So if it's going to be translated into animation, you know, I was hoping Studio Bones would do it because I know Studio Bones would do it a really good job because they did the whole, um, what's the movie called? They did um, Sword of the Stranger. But um, yeah, that's all I have to say about Sasuke video. Sasuke, you were a little bit off, but I do kind of agree with your concerns about the series. But um, there is kind of, there is clear character motivation um, we kind of see Maki and, um, I know Tsukage Isha's relationship in episode three. We, we kind of, there's some choice dialogue with Sasuke Abayama and how he was a friend of Rin's dad. So it's like, I don't know how you're, you're, you're confused. Um, and it might be because of the directing style for the guy who's directing it is very different than most people. Um, but yeah, I still liked your video, Sasuke, but, um, you, you're gonna have, well, yeah. Um don't don't get angry. Peace out.